हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल लेट एस कंटिन्यू इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी एंड दिस इज द इलेवेंथ वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट यू नो सम एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ अवर इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी एंड वन ऑफ देम इज डबल टैक्सेशन अवॉइडेंस अग्रीमेंट ओके सो दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉलिसी ऑफ द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट ओके डबल टैक्सेशन अवॉइडेंस अग्रीमेंट द नेम इट सेल्फ सजेस्ट दैट यू नो दिस अग्रीमेंट दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ अग्रीमेंट बिटवीन वन और टू कंट्रीज ओके टू और मोर कंट्रीज एंड इट इज टू यू नो अवॉइड डबल टैक्सेशन ऑफ पीपल ओके डबल टैक्सेशन मीनिंग टैक्सेशन इन बोथ द कंट्रीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ समबडी इज एन इंडियन फेलो ओके इफ एन इंडियन पर्सन इज वर्किंग इन यू एस ए ओके सो ही इज एन एन आर आई ही इज अ नॉन रेसिडेंट इंडियन सो बेसिकली if he is earning in usa and he is paying taxes in usa so he should not pay tax in india also okay he should not pay tax in india also because he has already paid taxes to the us government so the indian government should not ask for any taxes uh, you know on the same income if he is bringing that income to india okay if that person is bringing that income to india and if he has already paid taxes in usa and if india and usa has signed this double taxation avoidance treaty okay this agreement with each other then he should not pay the double tax okay he should not pay the tax again so double taxation avoidance treaty is basically to benefit people to avoid paying ta taxes two times okay multiple times so that is a background so this is a treaty signed between two or more countries okay it is applicable where a tax payer meaning a person who is paying taxes residing in one country has to earn income from another country okay he can avoid being taxed twice so for example if somebody as i have told you if he is residing in india for example he is a re indian resident okay and if he is an indian resident and he has gone to say singapore for some time okay he has gone to singapore for 3 months and in this 3 months if say for example if he earns some money there or you know he gets some award and from that award you know he has paid some tax to the singaporean government now if he is bringing that money to india so indian government will not ask him to pay income tax on that because he has already paid it to singapore okay he can avoid being tax uh, he can avoid being taxed twice okay so that is basically the purpose of double taxation avoidance agreement india has signed 88 such agreements out of which 85 are effective okay and the major countries with which you know important countries with which we have dtaa are uae okay because so many nris live in uae uk us new zealand canada singapore etc okay we have 88 such agreements out of which 85 are effective it promotes exchange of goods services and investment of capital okay so see if you know if people are having incentive that they should not be paying double taxes okay in both the countries so obviously they will exchange more goods more services they will go and you know maybe earn their some money come back and you know they will not be taxed again and again and you know so it will encourage uh, uh, investment also in that way however double taxation avoidance agreement can become an incentive for even legitimate investors to route investments through low tax regimes to sidestep taxation loss of tax revenues now see what is the meaning of this particular point i'll give you an example for example there is an indian person okay now this indian person uh, you know uh, for example he is in india and here is another country known as singapore now singapore is a country which has low tax rates okay low tax rates compared to india the tax the income tax rates are lower in singapore now this indian person he wants to invest some money in india okay he wants to invest money in india so if he invests money directly in india being in india and if he earns some income out of it he will have to pay taxes to the indian government say the taxes he he has to pay here is at 30% his income tax okay i'm just giving you an example so he is paying income tax which is earned in india from investment in india is 30% but to avoid this what he he does is he will misuse this dta treaty between india and singapore what he will do is he will route his investment through the singapore country okay so what he'll do he will send money to singapore he will establish a company here in singapore and he will route this money he will send money to his company in singapore and this company will now invest in india it will earn some money here and in the form of royalty it will be paid back to the company in singapore now in singapore he will pay taxes at a lower rate maybe say 2% or 5% whatever 
and now since india and singapore have dtaa even if he brings this money back to india he will not pay the taxes again okay so you are getting this point so he will route his investment through the low tax regime meaning the where the tax rates are lesser okay where the country where the tax rates are lesser to sidestep taxation okay so here he is avoiding paying taxes in india and he is paying lower taxes in singapore in another in another country okay so he is routing investment like this he is forming a company here this company is investing in india he is earning some money in the form of royalty back to this company now he is paying income tax in singapore now in singapore he is paying low tax and he is taking this money back the profit money back to india and now he is saying to the indian government that i have already paid the income tax on this income in singapore you have the double taxation avoidance agreement with singapore i will not pay taxes again in india this is a simple logic so this is what it can happen okay now uh, now let us talk about the oil imports okay oil imports again very important topic in international economic policy of india okay ever since the you know uh, ukraine and russia war okay ukraine russia war thankfully it has ended now so uh, you know oil import has been a major uh, thing you know major discussion point that's why i thought i should include this in my economics lessons also okay now see oil and gas let us look at some of some you know very basic things oil and gas are among the eight core industries okay we have already studied about the core industries in one of our lessons you can go back and see what are these core industries and you will see that oil and gas is one of them and india is the third largest oil consumer okay we are the third largest oil consumer in the entire world more than 85% of our oil demand comes from imports okay only 15% of our oil demand comes from the internal domestic exploration of oil okay we have some oil fields maybe in assam and some in maharashtra gujarat side but you know 85% of our oil comes from imports so we have to import our oil from the other countries because we don't have reserves of oil sufficient reserves of oil in our country now recently that is in october 2022 russia is the largest supplier of oil to india this is an important news you should keep this in mind russia has become the largest supplier of oil to india and it is supplying almost 25% of india's crude oil imports okay so almost 25% of our oil is coming from russia today and you know in december 2022 the data which i have we were buying 1.19 million barrels per day from russia okay you can imagine 1.19 million million means 10 lakh okay so 1 million mean 10 lakh so we were buying 1.19 million barrels ओके बैरल्स पर डे सो एक दिन में हम लोग 1.19 मिलियन बैरल खरीदते हैं रशिया से एज इन डिसम्बर दिस वॉज द परचेस एंड इट अकाउंट्स फॉर ऑलमोस्ट 25 फाइव परसेंट ऑफ अवर ऑयल इम्पोर्ट्स इंडियाज क्रूड ऑयल इम्पोर्ट ओके सो वॉट आर वी परचेजिंग क्रूड ऑयल क्रूड ऑयल मीनिंग कच्चा तेल आफ्टर दैट इट इज रिफाइंड इट इज प्रोसेस्ड एंड देन पेट्रोल डीजल एंड यू नो अदर डिस्टिलेट्स आर फॉर्म्ड Iraq is the second highest supplier Iraq okay just keep this in mind Iraq is a country which is the second highest supplier 20.5% almost then Saudi Arabia 16% third highest UAE is the fourth highest supplier and USA is the fifth highest supplier as on December 2022 okay this is the situation India is also a net exporter of petroleum products see crude oil we are importing okay crude oil we are importing we are the net importers of crude oil but after crude oil is processed okay petroleum products are formed petroleum product meaning gasoline ga petrol diesel etc okay petroleum products so we are exporting petroleum products to other countries we are bringing crude oil we are processing it we are refining it and then we are selling petroleum product to the other countries so we are the net exporter net exporter meaning uh import minus my uh, export minus import is positive net exporter meaning what meaning if we are exporting something we are importing something so value of expo exports is more than value of imports that is the meaning of net exporter and it is the largest exporter of petroleum product in asia since 2009 so we are see we are the largest exporter of petroleum product in asia so we are bigger than china also since 2009 and our top 3 export destinations our top 3 buyers are usa uae netherlands see you will you will look at the uh, you know uh, dichotomy here usa is the fifth largest crude oil supplier to india but it is the first you know it is the highest 
यू नो इट इज इट इज अ टॉप मोस्ट एक्सपोर्ट डेस्टिनेशन फॉर अवर पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स ओके सिमिलरली यू ए ई इज द फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट क्रूड ऑयल एक्सपोर्टर सप्लायर टू इंडिया बट इट इज ऑल्सो द सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट परचेसर ऑफ पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड थर्ड वन इज द नीदरलैंड्स ओके नीदरलैंड्स एज ऑफ डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू दिस इज द सिचुएशन now one thing we should keep in mind or uh, you know we should know what is oil benchmarks okay see whenever we go into market you know there are different quality of things available for example if you go to buy a shirt okay i'm just giving you a very simple example if you are going to buy shirt so in shirt there will be different qualities of shirt there will be cotton shirt right there will be silk shirt there will be different kind of shirts in cotton also there will be graded you know 100% pure cotton then you know australian cotton american cotton indian cotton different grades of cotton also and then because of different grade there will be different purity right D- different purity meaning different prices so similarly when you go to buy oil the oils are of different pu- purity and impurity okay and therefore we have to look at some benchmarks benchmarks are used to determine the price of products which come in a variety okay so if there is a variety of product for example in gold also okay in gold also purity matters it is 24 carat it is 22 carat or 20 carat 18 carat in this also there is purity for example it is 23.99 like that so depending on the purity we have to look at the benchmark okay whenever we have to decide the price we have to check again some benchmark so for benchmark the price is fixed okay price is fixed for the benchmark and depending on you know for example if this is the benchmark this is the level of benchmark and if you know uh, the the pri- the oil that we are getting if it is higher than the benchmark that means we are going to pay the higher price if it is lower than the benchmark we are going to pay the lower price so that's why benchmarks are important and oil that is crude oil come into many varieties okay it comes into many different varieties and uh, you know the variety depends upon two factors the first one is the volatility and second one is the sulfur content okay volatility is measured by the api gravity okay it is a measure it is a laboratory test by which you can measure the api gravity of the oil okay it measures basically the volatility meaning how how much uh, you know volatile that oil is if api gravity is more i'll just tell you one simple fact if api gravity is more it means it is more volatile higher the api gravity higher is the volatility okay higher is the grade okay and sulfur content sulfur is a kind of impurity sulfur is an impurity contamination in the oil so higher the sulfur content lesser is the purity okay so just keep this thing in mind so the three primary benchmarks the world over global benchmarks are these three west texas intermediate texas is a state in america okay it is a name of a state in usa where the oil exploration happen then second one is a brent blend okay brent is a you know it uh, it is in the north sea okay so uh, the oil which comes out of the north sea uh, it is known as the brent crude or brent blend and third one is a dubai crude okay so these three are the global benchmarks now let us look at the difference between these three very simply i'll tell you you don't have to keep these things in mind just keep in mind these words west texas brent and dubai crude what are these these are the oil benchmarks these are the oil benchmarks you have to just keep these words in mind okay because a question can come what is the meaning of this because oil imports are in the news these days so west texas intermediate it is the lightest one meaning the api gravity is highest okay it is the lightest it is more volatile then brent is slightly heavier than wti and dubai is the heaviest one okay so you see the quality is deteriorating like this it is the highest quality then slightly lesser then uh, you know the uh, worst quality is in dubai uh, when when it comes to api gravity okay then west texas is also the sweetest sweetest meaning the lowest sulfur content okay sulfur con- content is low meaning it is more pure okay purity is high purity is high then slightly higher sulfur content that means the purity is slightly less and here high sulfur content again in terms of sulfur content west texas is the best quality okay purity is the highest it is the sweetest one okay so quality is reducing like this now it is named after the oil extracted in usa in the texas region of usa okay west texas intermediate so uh, it is used in usa okay usa uses this uh, benchmark and uh, uh brent uh, crude is uh, this benchmark is a mix of crude oil from 15 different oil fields from the north sea okay north sea is in europe okay 
you can see uh, on the map where is the north sea you can look it in the google map also so uh, there are many oil fields in the north sea so the oil which is coming from the the 15 different oil fields from the north sea almost the quality is same and you know then they are mixed and uh, you know uh, that benchmark is set and obviously the dubai or oman uh, it 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 is uh, it is explored in the uae region okay so dubai is a city in uae uh see the north sea uh, the brent uh, crude it is the oldest one and you know it it is also you know since it is explored in the sea region on the sea shores okay it is easy to transport easy to transport whereas the texas it is it is in the landlocked region okay so in, in order to transport this landlocked oil which is explored there you know the transportation cost is very high transportation cost is high and therefore the demand for west texas is less okay demand for west texas is less and demand for brent is very high and india also uses the brent crude only okay we follow this benchmark only most widely used benchmark in the world because you know it is mostly used by every country because the transportation cost of this oil is less okay it is also used in india so india also follows the brent crude okay brent crude benchmark only so just keep these things in mind uh, i think this is sufficient uh, for you to uh, for you to uh, you know keep this thing in mind uh, this much uh, so this was about this lesson uh, i wanted to discuss these two important topics in international economic policy we'll continue it in the next video thank you